Hey everybody, it's time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, and Tang, we're along for the ride, Zoom and podcast. Okay, guys, we got an act, we got an action packed show, as we like to say. Lillard goes off, AD's going to return, staff having temper tantrums. We're going to start with the Celtics, though. Uh, Bob, I'll start with you. The Celtics dropped a couple of games in Florida. I don't think any of us are alarmed. They are an undermanned team uh, right now. So my question to you is, how do you manage the Celtics the rest of the way? Right now, they could obviously win the regular season easily. But is that the most important thing? Well, no, they're not. I, I would disagree with that statement right away. Uh, there's no lock here on him having the best record in the East. Uh, they'll get two games and a loss right now. That's up. That's all they're up. And uh, but Bob, I mean, let me let me push back a little bit. If they try to have the best record in the East, if they say our goal is to have the best record in the East, don't you think they're the odds on favorite to do it? I I think they have. Well, we we have been lauding their depth, and and yet their depth did not quite get the job done in Florida, as we right. know. Um, and, that, and of course, when you lose four guys to your first six, that's that's really stretching it. I agree, and and that's why I'm not panicking or anything. Uh, we know how good they can be, um, and and so uh, yeah, I think you 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 want to have that that home. You want to have that best record. You don't want to do anything crazy though. Do you want to deviate from the policy of, of Al? What are you doing with Al? Uh, uh, you know, the no back to backs. You have you got two you got two major issues here. You got Al and you got Williams. And then how are you going to manage them? And we all know, one thing I think the three of us agree on, ain't going nowhere very deep in the playoffs without Robert Williams. He's going to, he's the difference, he's your championship difference. And so they got to treat him with, with TLC and, 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 you know, and, uh, and, and it's, it's precarious always. Um, other than that, you know, don't go crazy with load management for guys like uh, Tatum and Brown uh, down the stretch. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm going old school on you here. I'm, I'm, I'm just fed up with some of the stuff that uh, uh, the people that get pulled out of games, but um, that's all. I just think you got to be very careful. I, I'm always concerned that the issue is, or, or the issues are those two guys I mentioned. That's the issue. So Gary, can we talk about a guy that we haven't talked about enough on this pod when, when discussing the Boston Celtics? Sure. And that that's the trade that, might when we're looking back on it if they win a title this year we're going to point to this trade as the reason why and it's the one that they acquired Malcolm Brogdon okay because he is everything and and he's been out for the last few games and that's part of the reason why I think they've struggled but you know the number one question with Malcolm Brogdon when they got him was what injuries right he'd been hurt the last few years he hadn't looked like himself uh, and it was like one thing after another. Is Malcolm Brogdon going to stay healthy? He's he's played in almost every game, health-wise. I think he's played in 41 of 45 games so far, something like that. He's only missed a handful of games, and a couple of them have been because of personal reasons here lately. Um, look at how efficient he's been. The other thing was, can he shoot it? You know, he had had a down year or two shooting the ball from deep. Uh, look at what he's shooting now from three, 46 percent from three playing with Jason. T he's never played with dudes like this before where you can't guard him. You have to pay attention to Tatum and Jalen Brown. And oh, by the way, Malcolm Brogdon in the locker room is a man, right? He's a professional. He's a man. He's all about the right things and winning. And then on the court, he's all about the right things and winning and making the right decisions and moving the basketball. He, it's almost like having another coach on the court. And uh, his efficiency numbers are, are ridiculous this year. I mean, he's only playing 24 minutes a game. So his, his, you know, he's only averaging 14 points a game. But if you, if you run that out to, you know, 35 minutes a game, this is a guy. And again, he rebounds well for his position. He passes well. He defends. Sure. He is, to me, again, going back to it, the most important acquisition that this team has had in, in the last couple of years. I couldn't believe how easy it was to get him. I was so thrilled. To, uh, that, well, it was, it was it was great. And then, I mean, we kidded about before it was over. Before they got him, I was kidding. I wanted to get Malcolm Brogdon so Grant Williams would have somebody to talk to. You know. So there's another another bonus there. We get a, a he's a basketball player, capital B, capital P. You know, and 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 and, and he, yeah, the only concern. Uh, no, only the other concern, and it was a minor one because of who he is, but you just wondered, would be okay coming off the bench. That's yeah. all. 
and apparently he's okay coming off the bench. So, yeah. No, I, I get definitely. I mean, him not being in these games, I got to believe that, that, that he alone would have made a difference that they would have won those games in Florida. So, also, yeah. do we or have we, and maybe I'm late to the game, but can we finally say how essential Marcus Smart is to the team? Well, you know, I'm great. I've been on that. Remember that fan yeah. club since he, the day one. Yeah. I, yeah. I pushed back on it because I didn't think, and, and I don't think, Bob, you thought he'd ever be like a point guard. Oh. But but he's turned into a pretty good point a guard. A year ago at this time, right now, this they were starting their ascent. And the question that, and, and what we were marveling about was, Hey, he's acting like a real point guard. <laughs> we we doubt it. I doubt it. I I I said that's he's. I love him for what he is great at. I love his defense. Right. I love his moxie. I love he makes plays. Your you, impossible plays. Uh, I like his, his spirit, his fire, his desire to blah 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 blah. But is he really a point guard? And we we all know that from that the middle of January until the the last day of the playoffs, he was a point guard, and 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 he can do it if he wants to. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things where we say like guys can't change, right? I mean a lot of times. You make determinations on, on guys. Here's what he is because this, and I've seen Marcus since he was like 15 years old. So for me, it was even harder to, to, to fathom that he could change his game. But, you know, he really did. And again, you just wonder, you know, sometimes if it's just maturity, uh, sometimes it might have been Damon Stoudemire helping him out. Mm-hmm. It might have been all the people saying he couldn't be a point guard, um, but he's run the team well. You know, still, obviously, some of the, the three pointers he takes a little, you know, head scratching at times, but you know what he's doing? He's taking care of the ball now. Yeah. Well, I, I, one other player I want to talk about uh, from the my from the last couple of games with the Celtics, well, specifically the Miami game, is Bam Adebayo had a night against the Celtics in their loss to Miami, thirty points and fifteen rebounds. And when I read this, you know, I looked at his line and I was like, I mean, Jeff, I'll start with you on this. Has this guy underachieved? Because when I I remember when he came on, I thought he was going to be like a perennial all star. Is the problem me or is the problem him? You, you're the problem here. Uh, <laughs> you're always the problem here. Uh, listen, Bam's a, a really good player, but I remember a couple of years ago, I can't remember who it was on ESPN, but I don't know if it was like Perk or somebody else, Richard Jefferson, somebody saying like. They would take Bam out of bio like to start a team over anybody because of his his defensive versatility, right? And Bam's a really good player, a really good player. But what Bam can't be is your best player. He can't be your best player because you can't just go to him and just say, get me a bucket. That's not what he is. He's a really good overall all-around player. I, I love Bam, and Bam's gotten better over the years. But again, you're not throwing the ball to Bam in the post. You're not saying to Bam, hey, go make a play facing up. He can do some of those things, but that's that's not really what he is. He's a great, versatile defender who's a great number two or three guy on a championship team, and that's what he – I mean, that's kind of what he was. He's obviously not a champion, but um, that's what he, he was when Jimmy Butler's Jimmy Butler. And I think it's part of the reason Miami can't win a championship. They don't have that dude. Jimmy Butler's a really good player, but I'm not sure he's a, a number one for a championship caliber team. He's that next tier guy. Um, I'm closer to you in this one than I am to, to Gary in that he's better than I thought he would be. And I, I, I thought I liked him in college, you know, but this, I like I, and I say I've seen him, including the other night when they threw the ball to him and he made a play. Uh, he can't, anyway, it's not it's not you don't want to rely on that. He's good. He worries me. I don't like playing him uh, for the Celtics. He's he's, he's been a, a problem for the Boston Celtics the last couple of years. So, you know, I just as soon avoid him in the playoffs. But but uh, but I respect him. And, and, and he, he, you're right. He's that next level of, 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 of excellent NBA player. You know what he is? He, he's the guy that really and, and remember in the playoffs last year. I remember walking out with him. I forget what game it was, but again, you know, I've known Ben a long time. So he, it was, it was later on in the series. He hadn't been aggressive early in the series against Boston at all. And it, it, it was one of the home games. It must've been five. What would have been five? Um, and, and walking out with him and saying like, that's what you need to do. You need to be more aggressive. Your team needs you to be more aggressive. And sometimes that's the problem with Bam. Is sometimes he just kind of settles into his role a little bit too much. 
and isn't as assertive. And, uh, you know, obviously you look at him and, and he, he's a man. I mean, he is an absolute oh, yeah. man. Well, he's a nice player. And uh, yep. anyway, he's a, we respect him. Check out Screen Time, movies, streaming, and everything in between with us, Gary Tangway and Drew Yano. We watch what you watch, so watch us wherever you get your podcasts, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and we're pretty easy on the eye. Yeah, no we're not. Speak for yourself. Screen Time, movies, streaming, and everything in between. And what a game for Damian Lillard as they defeated Utah 134 to 124. And you want to talk about numbers. And I know, Bob Ryan, you love the numbers. We'll start with you. Uh, Very interesting stats for a guy putting up 60. 21 for 29, 9 for 15 on threes. That's not bad. Yeah, that. uh, And only 10 free throws. Well, he was launching from outside. You know, I I know these are dazzling numbers. Let me give you his uh, January uh, totals, okay? So January, January 8th, since January 8th, 34, 30, 50, 36, 40, 44, 25, 24. God, I should have docked those paycheck. 37 and 60. I let the record show. I voted for him in the top 75. I think it was like 74 or 75 on my list. I'm, but I'm, 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 I know. So I've been aboard with him. But uh, what can we say? The guy's, a, the guy's a monster. The guy's a tremendous offensive player, period. Yeah. He's fun to watch too, because again, you know, I, I love these guys that, that came out of schools that they didn't have their ass kissed. And, and I think oh, yeah. it's part of the reason why Damian Lillard coming out of you know Weber State and Steph Curry coming out of Davidson have been as successful as they've been. And I, I just remember being at the combine years ago when when he the year Dame was drafted. For some reason at the combine that year, they only allowed one media person in. It was the weirdest thing. And somehow it was me. So I was there watching Dame Lillard put on one of the greatest shooting displays I've ever seen anywhere at any time on the planet. (laughs) And I walked away and I'm like, oh, my God, like, how could this guy not be a high lottery pick? And again, it it was kind of still in the early days of like, you know, um, these NBA scouts and GMs you know, really finding these under the radar guys, you know, they've found them in the past, but now it's like, they know every one of them. Right. You know, and they see them all the time, you know, for, for, for this one, it was like, you know, Dame kind of coming out of nowhere, a little bit out of Weber state. And he, he has, I mean, when you say that Bob, that, that you voted for him, one of the top 75 players, I'm like kind of befuddled in a way. I'm like, wow. Like it, it surprises me and then you look at what he's done and you're like you know what 18 almost 19,000 points and he's still only 32 years old he's probably got five years left that averaging in this day and age in the NBA where you know a lot of people are putting up crazy numbers he's going to put up 25 a game probably for the next three four years at, at minimum I uh, I remember thinking I think one of the reasons that I did, frankly, you know, uh, when you're weighing down, you're getting that good to it, is that I I didn't want to go overboard on the old guys. I wanted to make sure I paid sufficient homage to right. the modern game, you know, because you know I'm proprietary toward the older guys. Naturally, I, I I'm trying to protect their their glory and their image, but I certainly don't want to be some stupid old fart that won't acknowledge that the game, you know, is being played at a very high level now and and shooting, especially shooting. And this guy is a tremendous player. So, um, um, you know, that I, I – but I, that was a tough decision, I think, in the end for me. But I put him in 75. I'm glad I did. Uh, Jeff, do you think that the reason some of these guys are flying under the radar and now with <laughs> social media and video and the way we're all connected, I mean, it's very hard for somebody to go unknown in any part of the world. But do you think part of the reason was that young athletes in all sports are – crowned can't miss kids when they're like 14 when they're 15 you know i i've just seen this in other sports where you have a kid who's like 13 or 14 years old and they go, oh that's the kid you can't you know and then you go well let's wait and see what, what about the 14 or 15 year old kid let's wait and see when they're 20 well, you know i think we Bates. i think we put a label on young athletes too soon well that's this kid amani Bates right now and he just came off a game where he so his, his, his story is 15 years old. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, number one player next uh, KD, not LeBron, but 
he kind of looked like KD at the same stage. And then he kind of leveled off a little bit and uh, reclassified, went to Memphis last year, averaged about 10 points a game, didn't go well, transferred to Eastern Michigan. He's from Ypsilanti, transferred back home, gotten a little issue before the season, having a gun in his car, suspended. Um, went for 43 two nights ago, but the team is like four and 16 right now. Right. And the big question is, again, did too much come too soon for this kid? Sure and did. Too much attention. And the answer is absolutely. I mean, that's, that's impossible. And I talked to him for a while about this. <clears throat> and he said, like, it was, I was miserable because the expectations were so high and I wasn't ready. Yeah, as a 15 year old kid, I wasn't ready to be on sports. I thought it was really cool at the time, but looking back on it now, it was, it was too much to throw at a kid. Uh, this is a common athletic phenomenon theme in all sports. Uh, as we, you were speaking, a couple of things I want to say, but you were speaking, I was thinking about other guys in other sports that, that were cursed with the unlimited potential thing, you know? And, and I remember when Gabe Kapler came to the Red Sox, no, I, I'm just saying, Gabe Kapler came to the Red Sox. He was one of those guys that when he broke into baseball had this unlimited potential thing and, and it didn't work out right. that way. And he, that's how, and, and, you know, I remember talking because he's uh, talking to him about it. And of course he is one of the more cerebral players in the, I've ever dealt with in any sport at any time in history, of baseball, that he was able to willing to articulate that what this was all about now. I, okay. I'm just saying this happens up in the football. Remember uh, what was, uh, uh, Ron, the, the, uh, Ron Paulus oh, was supposed to win multiple oh, Heisman. Remember, Bino Cooks. Oh, I mean, I was a running back, Marcus Dupree. I mean, there's Marcus so Dupree. The, oh, the great, well, that's the great William Morris book, you know. The, 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 but uh, anyway, let's not bury the lead, however, about the other night's game. He scored 29 consecutive Eastern Michigan points in the midst of that game. Yes. 29 He's straight awesome. by one man. Now they lost the game. <laughs> they lost yes. that game. But he was awesome. All right. but yeah, How you old know, is he now, Jeff? How old is he now? I mean, he's probably only 19 at this Okay, point. but that's my point now, is that when you look at Damian Lillard, I guess to bring it back to what we were discussing, at, at 15, did somebody sit, look at Damian Lillard and go, no, and then they wrote him off. Yes. I mean, that's the insanity of it, right, Bob? As you look at a Damian Lillard or you look at, oh. um, I mean, anybody, a John Moran or any of these guys, you know, and you go, oh, at the 15, now, he's not going to be a player. Then by the time they get to 20, it, everything's changed. The no. best players right now, most of them in the NBA, are honestly guys that didn't get their ass kissed. I mean, obviously, you've got LeBron and KD. Sure. Well, and plus, and well, what you gotta, the concurrent with that in the current NBA, though, is that so many of the good players are not American. Correct. And so, you know, you know Giannis, no, Jokic, uh, you know, Vucevic, on and on it goes. Uh, Doncic, you know, so that's another phenomenon. That's a they might have gotten, gotten their ass kissed. They might have gotten their ass kissed. Well, I don't think, all right, but they. I don't know. So, but, um, cool. All right, I got a quiz for you. Quiz time for you guys. Yeah. Who's the greatest player in the history of Eastern Michigan? Uh, Boykins. Boykins. Earl Boykins. He's second. Uh, who's first? <laughs> I know this. I know this. I, I I I lost it. Iceman. Gervin. Uh, George Gervin. We talked about him last week. Wow. Iceman. Uh, that's right. We talked about it. Ralph Boykins, by the way, is the smallest guy ever to score either 40 or 50 or something in, in, in the NBA. That's good. I forgot the Iceman. It's a forgotten, that's one of those sadly forgotten little phenomena. You know, everybody remembers Muggsy Bogues and God just should. And we could, but but Earl Boykins made his little mark too at five five. <laughs> Uh, one guy who is not small in stature, uh, that's uh, Anthony Davis. Ah. We are expecting his return. So now let's talk about the Lakers. Uh, the Lakers, as we speak, when we're recording this, are like a game out of the play-in game. You know, so they're like a game out of the 10th spot. So how are we feeling about the Lakers? How are we feeling about AD? And do the Lakers need to make a deal, Bob? All right, number one, there are nine teams separated by two games in the loss column, starting at number five. So – any anything and everything can happen in terms of the, of course they're in the mix of course they got a shot of course they should be thinking about they can get up I mean they're only two games out of the fifth spot right. in the loss so come on of course they're in it they just made a deal that I'm um, curious to see what Jeff thinks you know about Hachimura um, you know he can shoot the ball uh, they, we, we all know they need they need to space the floor they get to shoot uh, is, is this just a, a a minor little thing or could it be something Jeff. I mean, for them, it could be, again, it could be enough 
to, to win him a couple games, right? He could help win him a couple more games. And if he does that, like you said, you go from where you're in the playing game to where you're fifth or sixth. And, you know, listen, right now you look at it, you're telling me you wouldn't want to finish six and draw Sacramento in the first round. Sure. I mean, like I'll take my chances with a healthy Anthony Davis, LeBron, oh, uh, listen, Sacramento. We so, all not, nothing has changed. I don't think the three of us would disagree that that a healthy Anthony Davis is a makes makes yes. him somebody you don't want to mess around with. I mean, and guys, we need it. From, from an entertainment perspective. Excuse me. <clears throat> from an entertainment perspective, we need the Lakers in the mix. I mean, we do. I mean, I, I, we love the Warriors, but let's face it. You know, the NBA to me is just and this is I love this. Some curious don't. But, you know, I love the the flash and the dash and the big names of the NBA. I love it. I love the stars. I mean, Bob, we need the Lakers coming out of the West. We do because it's just so blah without them. people. I know it's I know it's not very dazzling uh, uh, right now that uh, thinking about the best team could be either Denver or Memphis, or, or I still think right in the mix with a healthy Zion, I wouldn't dismiss them either in, in New Orleans. Well, but, I think Zion has star power. I mean, I, I, don't don't love to see, I don't know how it would work out. But, I mean, I don't know how, but I mean, if, if somehow the Lakers and Zion met in the playoffs, Bob, that's a flipping series. I mean, no, if I'm no. a TV executive, I'm out of my mind. Four I think, five, we need that in the four or five game. Yeah. Somehow. You know, now we do, yeah, we will, so we would have you know, Ja involved in, in the play. I'm just saying about star power. I'm talking about guys I want to see. I always want to see Ja play, you know, sure. and, and, you know, and, and Vukovic, I mean, excuse me, I keep saying Vucevic, although he's having the a good one team, team guys, the one team you're looking at and you're like Sacramento. I like Sacramento. I know Bob loves Sacramento because they get some bonus. Because they got my, one of my all time yeah. favorite players. I so. get it. But like, they're that team that still people are going to look at and be like, eh, I don't really want to watch no, the Lakers play Sacramento. And, and, and look at the playing teams right now. Like Minnesota, eh, you know, like you need Golden State or the Lakers to me in that play. And that's what made it great when it, when the play-in series started, right? They were both in it, I think. That right. Didn't they play I mean, in the Nets, year? didn't the Nets do it in the East once? So yeah, you need you need a couple intriguing things for the play. The yeah. playing game has worked <laughs> ultimately because you've had stars in the playing game that, that, you know, their teams just have been banged up or they've been hurt. Uh, but I, I think the Lakers, if you can somehow find a way to protect Anthony Davis, um, maybe they can make a run. By the way, by the time we're doing the next pod, guys, we could be talking about the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Yeah. Uh, not being Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Which you need, 178? 157, I believe. Oh, okay. Right? All right, okay. Oh, he'll, yeah. Uh, well, if not then, it's the one after that. So, right. oh, yeah. He had 48 the other night in, in defeat. He's, How do you feel about that, Bob? Oh, I think it's appropriate. I mean, he's going to wind up with the most games ever played. Robert Paris is, you know, holds that record, by the way. He's going to wind up with the most games ever. I mean, this is over half his life has been spent in the NBA now, you know, well over half his life. And um, he's, you know, he's, uh, uh, yeah, he's phenomenon. I mean, no, I, I have no problem with it. Um, rec- you know, the old records are made to be broken thing. And uh, I never assumed that somebody couldn't come along and, and, and be, uh, beat out Kareem. And if anybody's going to do it, in, in, in our experience in the last 20 years, of course, it's this guy. So I have no problem with it at all. He, I think he deserves to have that record. Oh, by the way, one, I must be a little side with talking about Golden State for a second. Okay. Um, I, I, I looked at the box score from last night uh, and I'm, I'm thinking how the game, it just sp- spells out how the game has changed with regard to the respect and need for a big man, a five man in the NBA. Uh, they, 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 they're going with a three guard lineup. And Jeff, you know, in the, in the, in, in the and the history of the NCAA, we're always intrigued when a, co- a good college team has three guards and two forwards and no center, right? Yes. Well, the Warriors <laughs> started the three guards again last night. And, of course, they had like 60-some points among them. And uh, uh, I got to throw this one out there. I've been saying for years and years that the greatest three-man backcourt in the history of the NBA was the Pistons, uh, the bad boy Pistons with with, with uh, Isaiah, Joe, and, and Vinny. And, that, and I'll stand on that. But they're uh, – this one right now is as good as any that's ever been in any given point of time. Yeah. This three man backcourt. Would you not agree? Yes. Yeah. I, I would put it up there. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it might end up being better than that. Oh, it might very well be. Pool's so young. Now, the question how much longer does, does, does Clay have to give? And well, both of those two got in their age. So it's going to be, but over the next 
right now, starting now, and going over maybe another year or so, this could be the, the they're, they're in the they're, they can make a case we're the greatest all around scoring backcourt in the history of the NBA. Well, I mean, Jeff, how do you feel? We are Bob Stuss. Can they win it without a big man? Golden well, like, State. Yeah. I mean, they can come out of the West. I don't think they can win it, but I think they can come out of the West. The West is just so. I mean, it's crazy looking at it now, how it's flipped. I mean, Phoenix is – obviously, they've been banged up too. They're gone. But, you know, you got these teams and these these dominant players that are getting older, frankly. You know, Chris Paul for Phoenix and LeBron, you know, they're they're kind of on their way out. And, you know – the And Warriors themselves. I mean, the, the core guys – I mean, how – Draymond's 32 at least, right? And the other guys, we know. So, oh, no, they, they got to get it done. I mean, this is the, – the, the, the window, as we say, is closing. But it ain't shut. It hey, is I, I, not shut. I have a number for you on, on you know, here it is, the all-time leader in, in points scored. Um, LeBron James has made uh, 2,222 three-pointers in his <laughs> NBA oh, career. Okay. That's Kareem, the, hey, hey, Bob, Kareem made one. One, he did one make one. 18. Had to be at the end of the 24-second clock. <laughs> we need right. video. I got to see what it oh, is. I'd love to see it. Right, me too. No, but that is anytime we have these discussions about scoring. By the way, uh, Lillard was appropriately humble when informed that he said now that was his sixth sixty-point game. Wilt had thirty-two. <laughs> <laughs> but but okay, now let me throw in this into the debate. Uh, would you agree that Wilt and Kareem, their shots or their uh, modus operandi was of a higher percentage than what LeBron and some of these guys do today? So if well, you're taking a 10-foot hook shot that nobody can block, is that easier right. than making a three? Uh, well, especially Wilt Late's career. Will, and Will had three phases of his career, and in the final phase, he didn't want to shoot. He just wanted to – you know, he only wanted the finger roll and dunk. And and one year, you know, he did shoot 70% on the floor, shoot, quote-unquote. Well, yeah. It, he just was listed, you know, and that's – anyway, that's true. Yeah, I mean, they're different players, but Kareem's hook remains the, the most famous single shot in the history of basketball. On well, stop, did anybody ever and, block and, it? Oh, I'm sure maybe, uh, who knows, maybe, you know, Will, um, they had a playoff series the year after the Lakers won in 71-72. I mean, after, after excuse me, after the Bucks won. And and uh, the Lakers beat them, and, and Will really held his own very, very, very well, aging Will against young Kareem. I wouldn't be surprised if he got his hand on one or so. I'd love that he could have. And Nate Thurman, Nate Thurman, who Kareem had said is the toughest guy to, for me to play, was a, uh, uh, he may very well have got his hand on one. Yeah, I mean, that, too. Who knows? That, that's a video, man. That's a video. Well, that, um, it's like talking about the, the 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 dinosaurs roaming the earth. You look at the centers in the NBA in the early seventies and the ABA. Yeah, and some of the greatest center names in the history of basketball all played. It, it, it's just totally different game. It just you know the, we couldn't have foreseen the t- the hostile takeover of the three or anything like what we're seeing today. And they can't imagine what it was like. Today, if you're if you're a basketball fan, of uh, what what that game was like watching those guys play. Uh, Jeff, did you want to comment on Steph getting tossed? Uh, is yeah, it I mean, frustrating of, setting in? Yeah, he. Did, you know, the good thing they've all been for throwing his mouthpiece yeah. into the crowd <laughs> out of frustration. Last night, the frustration was about a teammate, about Jordan Poole. So you know, Steph's about as classy as it gets. I know oh, people yeah. are upset with Steph over the last few years that he's celebrating a little bit more than than he certainly did early in his career. I'll still put Steph Curry up against any superstar I've ever been around in any sport, okay, in any sport these days that that's that stayed humble, that's not forgotten where they've come from, that has right. not changed. Steph Curry to me again, like, I, I'll take him, man. He, he He's all about the right things. You know, I believe that he's the most influential basketball player of the 21st century because of the what he's done with the three and had every kid in America and, and you know, and ships at sea want to shoot the three. But you're right. It, the, the, the whole package. He's the most rootable superstar for you. You're a parent in America and you want to point your basketball loving boy or girl to an individual to, to look up to. You start with Steph Curry. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, to wrap things up, guys. Uh, how do we feel, Bob, I'll start with you, about John Morant walking the dog? It's been very controversial. Do we know uh, do you know what I speak of? Well, only tangentially. I read about this. I didn't I I, I haven't seen it or um uh, well it's a thing to set it up. It, it's a thing now where I find it frustrating. But I see high school players do it, 
I see kids do it all the time. And I'm like, oh, for God's sakes. And what it, what it is is now Moran has started this trend, Jeff, of just letting the ball roll up the floor. Oh, the that. Before second clock doesn't start until he picks it up at like half court. Okay. And that's walking the dog. And now oh. it's a thing. It's a thing. Well, I, well, this is a tactic that's been, I'd say it's it's prevalent in the last 20 years. And the thing I don't understand is how why anybody does it if your team is leading. You're supposed to do it if your team is losing. You need the clock. That's what I thought was the point. That's when everybody did it. You know who drove me crazy doing it? Dennis Schroeder last year. Dennis Schroeder did it and 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 drove me nuts. I was glad to see him go. And uh, I, 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 it can be exaggerated, you know. And I, I always hope it's going to backfire on somebody, you know. Somebody. So I hope somebody gets up and just gets their tail up there and steals the ball when they do it. It's always- I'm saying, you know, I want to see it backfire, but you know, it, it, you know, it, I'm not going to go overboard about it. I, I, you know, but I'm not a fan of it. But because I think you do it, if, if, it's stupid if he's doing it when they're winning. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know, good minute. Losing, I was looking for a Bob Ryan rant. We we're looking I for like, flex. I feel like they just do it. Are they doing it because they realize like all this this time adds up and they get another possession and it might you know it, it adds to the numbers in the sport, the <laughs> offensive production. I I don't know. I mean, again, uh, like you said, if you're down late in the game, I get yeah. it. Obviously, that's, that's why. When, that's when I first saw it, and but it, it wasn't. I'd say it started about twenty years ago. Yeah, it wasn't. You, you start every once in a great while. Yeah, like every once in a great while. Yeah, it was late in the game when you were losing. Period. Right. End of story. Now it's like having this discussion. Well, it's like, what can I say? I don't want to, I'm not going to play fuddy-duddy on it here. If he wants to do it, fine. (laughs) All right, Jeff Goodman, Bob Ryan, always a pleasure, fellas. 